NASA says that Voyager 1 has become the first man-made object to reach interstellar space. After 46 years of exploration, no spacecraft has gone farther than NASA Voyager telescope. The launch of this telescope was the beginning of a journey around the universe. NASA's Voyager 1 spacecraft is an interstellar space, the space between the stars. 46 years ago on September 5, 1977, the Voyager 1 from Launch Complex 41 at the Cape Canaveral Air Force Station, aboard a Titan V launch vehicle. The Voyager 2 probe had been launched two weeks earlier, on August 20, 1977. Despite being launched later, Voyager 1 reached both Jupiter and Saturn sooner. Voyager 1 was constructed by the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. It has 16 hydrazine thrusters, 3 axis stabilization gyroscopes, and referencing instruments to keep the probe's radio antenna pointed toward Earth. Collectively, these instruments are part of the attitude and articulation control subsystem, along with redundant units of most instruments and 8 backup thrusters. The spacecraft also included 11 scientific instruments to study celestial objects such as planets as it travels through space. When Voyager 1 is unable to communicate directly with the Earth, its digital tape recorder can record about 67 megabytes of data for transmission at a later time. As of 2023 signals from Voyager 1 take over 22 hours to reach Earth, unlike the other onboard instruments, the operation of the cameras for visible light is not autonomous, but rather it is controlled by an imaging parameter table contained in one of the on-the-flight data subsystem. Since the 1990s, most space probes have been equipped with completely autonomous cameras, over the course of their grand tours of the solar system, the Voyagers took tens of thousands of images and measurements that significantly changed our understanding of the outer planets. At Jupiter, they gave us our first detailed ideas of how the planet's atmosphere moves and evolves, showing that the Great Red Spot was a counterclockwise rotating storm that interacted with other, smaller storms. They were also the first missions to spot a faint, dusty ring around Jupiter. Finally, they observed some of Jupiter's moons, discovering Io's volcanism, finding the linear features on Europa that were among the first hints that it might have an ocean beneath its surface, and granting Ganymede the title of largest moon in the solar system, a superlative that was previously thought to belong to Saturn's moon Titan. Next, each spacecraft flew past Saturn, where they measured the composition and structure of Saturn's atmosphere, and Voyager 1 also peered into Titan's thick haze. Its observations led to the idea that Titan might have liquid hydrocarbons on its surface, a hypothesis that has since been verified by other missions. When the two missions observed Saturn's rings, they found the gaps in waves that are well known today. Voyager 1 also spotted three previously unknown moons orbiting Saturn, Atlas, Prometheus, and Pandora. After this, Voyager 1 headed out of the solar system, while Voyager 2 headed toward Uranus. There, it found 11 previously unknown moons and two previously unknown rings. Many of the phenomena it observed on Uranus remain unexplained, such as its unusual magnetic field and an unexpected lack of major temperature changes at different latitudes. Voyager 2's final stop, 12 years after it left Earth, was Neptune. When it arrived, it continued its streak of finding new moons with another haul of six small satellites, as well as finding rings around Neptune. As it did at Uranus, it observed the planet's composition and magnetic field. But the extraordinary thing about Witchers is that each Voyager spacecraft has a golden phonograph record affixed to its side, intended as time capsules from Earth to any extraterrestrial life that might find the probe sometime in the distant future. They are inscribed with a message from Jimmy Carter, the US president at the time of launch, which reads, This is a present from a small, distant world, a token of our sounds, our science, our images, our music, our thoughts and our feelings. We are attempting to survive our time so we may live into yours. The covers of the records have several images inscribed, including visual instructions on how to play them, a map of our solar system's location with respect to a set of 14 pulsars, and a drawing of a hydrogen atom. They are plated with uranium, its rate of decay will allow any future discoverers of either of the records to calculate when they were created. The Voyager mission was officially approved in May 1972. Through the dedicated efforts of many skilled personnel for over three decades, the Voyagers had returned knowledge about the outer planets that had not existed in all of the preceding history of astronomy and planetary science. Now the mission team is getting creative with its strategies for the power supply and instruments on both Voyager 1 and 2 to enable both probes to continue collecting valuable data as they explore uncharted interstellar territory. Voyager 1 is currently the farthest spacecraft from Earth at about 15 billion miles away, 
while Voyager 2 has traveled more than 12 billion miles from Earth. Both are in interstellar space and the only spacecraft to operate beyond the heliosphere, the Sun's bubble of magnetic fields and particles that extends well beyond the orbit of Pluto. Voyager 2's priceless data is captured and returned to Earth through its five science instruments, while Voyager 1 still has four operational instruments after one failed earlier in the mission. Voyager 2 has begun using a small backup power reserve that was part of a safety mechanism, which will enable the spacecraft to keep from shutting down another science instrument until 2026, rather than this year. If this strategy works for Voyager 2, it may also be implemented on Voyager 1, since the team will have to consider shutting down another science instrument on the spacecraft in 2024. Had the Voyager mission ended after the Jupiter and Saturn flybys alone, it still would have provided the material to rewrite astronomy textbooks. But having doubled their already ambitious itineraries, the Voyager's return to Earth information over the years that has revolutionized the science of planetary astronomy, helping to resolve key questions while raising intriguing new ones about the origin and evolution of the planets in our solar system. But the question is how Voyager can still communicate with the Earth? The antennas that the Voyager spacecraft use are big. You may have seen people who have large satellite dish antennas in their yards. These are typically 2 or 3 meters in diameter. The Voyager spacecraft has an antenna that is 3.7 meters in diameter, and it transmits to a 34-meter antenna on Earth. The Voyager antenna and the Earth antenna are pointed right at each other. The Voyager satellites are also transmitting in the 8 gigahertz range, and there is not a lot of interference at this frequency. Therefore the antenna on Earth can use an extremely sensitive amplifier and still make sense of the faint signals it receives. Then when the Earth antenna transmits back to the spacecraft, it uses extremely high power to make sure the spacecraft gets the message. For comparison, it takes the rovers on Mars an average of just 15 minutes to send messages back to Earth, so 20 hours is enormous. Because of this it takes a total of 40 hours for us to know if Voyager received and processed each command we said to it. By the time the signal reaches Voyager and returns to Earth, once Voyager is ready to send a signal back to Earth, it points its transmitter precisely in our direction. Voyager sends its data back to Earth using a 20-watt signal, however, once it reaches Earth, the signal is much weaker due to free space path loss. This causes signals to spread are in space making them weaker and weaker as they travel further through space. Voyager 1's Power Source Since Voyager 1 is nuclear-powered, its electrical power weakens each day. Despite running since the 70s, these nuclear RTGs eventually run out of power. Not only that, their power output constantly decreases over time, and the current output is much lower than it was at its peak when it launched in the 70s. Because of this, NASA had to turn off most of Voyager's instruments over time to conserve power and make the space probe last for as long as possible. In 1990, in order to save power, engineers turned off the spacecraft's camera after Voyager took the famous pale blue dot image, which showed Earth as a tiny blue pixel against the darkness of space. This incredible image puts into perspective how far away these space probes are from Earth, and this was over 30 years ago. The fact that a tiny signal from Voyager's transmitter can be picked up by that tiny blue dot is incredible. The heliosphere is the magnetosphere, and outermost atmospheric layer of the Sun and it takes the shape of a vast, tailed bubble-like region of space. In plasma physics terms, it is the cavity formed by the Sun and the surrounding interstellar medium. The bubble of the heliosphere is continuously inflated by plasma originating from the Sun, known as the solar wind. Outside the heliosphere, this solar plasma gives way to the interstellar plasma permeating the Milky Way. As part of the interplanetary magnetic field, the heliosphere shields the solar system from significant amounts of cosmic ionizing radiation, uncharged gamma rays are, however, not affected. The scientific study of the heliosphere is heliophysics, which includes space weather and space climate. Voyager program spacecraft explored the outer reaches of the heliosphere, passing through the termination shock and the heliosheath. Voyager 1 encountered heliopause on August 25, 2012, when the spacecraft measured a 40-fold sudden increase in plasma density. Voyager 2 traversed the heliopause on November 5, 2018. Because heliopause marks the boundary between matter originating from the Sun and matter originating from the rest of the galaxy, spacecraft that depart the heliosphere are in interstellar space. Today, only 4 out of the 11 scientific instruments on Voyager 1 are still active. These instruments are being used to collect data on magnetic fields, solar winds and cosmic rays outside of our solar system. 
If everything goes well, we should still be able to communicate with Voyager, as long as we can decipher its signal. In around 8 years, Voyager 1 will completely run out of power and will no longer be able to keep its instruments going. At that point, Voyager will be completely on its own, on a trajectory that we will almost certainly never cross ever again. Scientists will continue to communicate with the space probe and receive the important information it gathers until it eventually sends its last bit of data and disappears silently into space, never to be heard from ever again. So although the end is near for the Voyager space probes, we can appreciate the incredible journey they have been on and the valuable science they have taught us.